An oxygen system consists of four primary components, a cylinder, a pressure regulator, a flow control device, and a delivery mechanism, like a cannula or a mask. Step one, choose a cylinder. Choosing the right cylinder is a cost-benefit calculation of size, weight, capacity, and cost. For most users, an aluminum cylinder is the right fit. Aluminum cylinders are the least expensive cylinders and they come in a variety of sizes, from the tiny AL113, to the popular AL415, to the long and slender AL682, our highest capacity aluminum cylinder. Aluminum cylinders have no mandated expiration date, as long as they pass hydro testing, which is required every five years. Carbon fiber cylinders are lighter than aluminum and a little more expensive. Carbon fiber cylinders have a service life of 15 years if they pass hydro testing every five years, after which they should be retired. One exception, the CFF 480 requires testing every three years. Kevlar cylinders are the lightest cylinders money can buy and are an incredible option for those looking to fly light. Our KF Kevlar cylinders require hydro testing every five years and like our carbon fiber cylinders, have a 15 year service life. Our large KF 115 Kevlar cylinder holds a whopping 3,257 liters of oxygen, nearly five times the capacity of our largest aluminum cylinder, and empty weighs only twice as much. A KF 115 coupled with an EDS system provides over 33 hours of oxygen for one person flying at 25,000 feet. At 10,000 feet, that goes up to nearly 200 hours of flying. Step two, pick the right pressure regulator. The rule of thumb when it comes to pressure regulators, make sure it fits your bottle and make sure it fits your needs. A pressure regulator typically sits on top of your cylinder, though there are exceptions. As their name suggests, regulators regulate the pressure of the outgoing oxygen from a cylinder, both reducing the pressure and keeping it from fluctuating. Having a controlled and constant pressure is critical in an oxygen system. When talking about cylinders and regulators, you might run into the terms CGA 540 and DIN 477. These are referring to the size and threading of the valve on top of the cylinder. CGA 540 is the standard in the US and Canada, while DIN 477 is the German standard used in Europe and elsewhere. For a regulator valve and cylinder to fit each other, they need to share the same connector type. Regulators come in one port and four port options. A single port regulator is suitable for most systems. Four port regulators are designed to connect a cylinder to more than one EDS pulse demand device and or constant flow station. A four port regulator automatically seals unused ports, which is why you don't see a two port or three port regulator option. It is four regulators in one. Also, with a four port regulator, you can connect both an EDS pulse demand device and a constant flow station to the same cylinder. When using a mountain high pulse demand oxygen delivery system, your regulator must deliver oxygen between 15 and 25 PSIG. For this reason, we recommend using mountain high regulators, which are specifically designed for use with our EDS pulse demand systems. The good news? All our regulators are compatible. If you buy a constant flow system now and decide to upgrade to an EDS system later on, you can use the same regulator. You'll need to connect your regulator to the flow control device so your fittings and connectors will need to match up. If you have any questions, give us a call. We also have ready-to-go systems, so you don't need to worry about your devices not connecting. For built-in systems to connect to an EDS system, an inline reducing regulator is required. This connects to the onboard oxygen supply and reduces the pressure so that it meets the pressure requirements of the EDS. Step three, choose a flow control device. Pulse demand or constant flow. The simplest and most efficient way to control oxygen flow is with an EDS pulse demand device. The EDS delivers a puff of oxygen only when a user inhales, allowing for dramatic savings in oxygen. Additionally, the EDS monitors pressure altitude and breathing patterns and measures the needed oxygen automatically, so no manual adjustment is needed during flight. The EDS is available in both a single place model, O2D1, and dual place model, the O2D2. Another way to control oxygen flow is with a flow meter. Flow meters come in two models. The green MH3 is the more efficient of the two and is suitable up to 18,000 feet. The red MH4 flow meter conserves less oxygen, but can be used up to 30,000 feet. 
With either flow meter, users turn a dial on the side of the flow meter to adjust the flow of oxygen. A ball floats inside to indicate the appropriate flow for a given altitude. For example, a person flying at 15,000 feet would adjust the dial so that the ball floats at the 15,000 feet mark. Simple and inexpensive, flow meters provide a way to have oxygen on board without a large upfront investment. A constant flow system like this is great for those who only occasionally fly at higher altitudes or who want to quickly fly over weather or mountains. Step 4. Choose masks and or cannulas. Cannulas are lightweight, efficient, inconspicuous, and allow for easy conversation as your mouth is not covered. Simple cannulas get the job done in most cases. For constant flow systems, you might consider an oximizer cannula. If you don't want that tubing hanging around and you'd like to mount a cannula to your headset, take a look at our very popular Easy Breathe cannulas. A face mask covers both your nose and mouth and is required by the FAA once you reach 18,000 feet. Also, if you do a lot of talking or if you generally breathe through your mouth, a cannula may be less effective and a mask may be preferable. A mask can be simple and inexpensive or more robust like our Alps face mask, which can come with a built-in microphone. Step five, mount your cylinder. Here are some quick solutions to mount your cylinder in your aircraft. The full pack is a simple solution which works great for most applications. The full pack is a sturdy carry case made of a padded Gore-Tex fabric with D-rings strategically placed so the harness can be securely mounted to a seat back or any other suitable surface where it can be accessed while in flight. A wide variety of sizes are available. The CMK Bracket Cylinder Mounting Kit is a rigid, low-profile, high-strength method of securing aluminum or composite fiber cylinders to a flat surface. If you are flying an experimental aircraft, a CMK mounting bracket can be an excellent way to mount your cylinder. CMK brackets are not certified for use in certified aircraft, however, field approval can be acquired. If you want things even simpler, we've taken the confusion out of oxygen systems by creating complete kits with everything you need to fly. Three ready-to-go kits can be found at the bottom of our Choosing an Oxygen System page at mhoxygen.com. You can find all the information mentioned in this tutorial, including links to the products mentioned, on the same page. We hope this helps you understand what you need to fly with oxygen. Feel free to call us with any questions, and happy flying!